The representation of wells and of the water pumping and distribution system are based mainly on data from the cultivation of orchards at the village of Cambos in Chios, where these techniques have been developed and to a large extent perfected. According to this data, when they began digging a well, artisans dug down to a relatively small depth and then constructed the masonry, i.e. a dry stone wall, which held the soil, before digging further. During the first phase, they also constructed four spans, which supported a basis for a makeshift capstan used for lifting soil as the well got deeper. Moving gradually in this manner, artisans would finally reach solid ground formations. From that point onwards, the diameter of the well decreased a little and it was not necessary to further support the inner walls with masonry. The artisans would often come across various water veins, but continued digging until they were sure they had discovered a significant vein. At that point, they would open a final, narrow hole connecting the main vein with the bottom of the well and would set a slab of marble in place, which allowed water to flow, but at the same time blocked any leaves, pebbles or soil that could close up the hole. The regular windlass was installed after the completion of the well and included a double wheel consisting of the outer wheel and the inner wheel. The system was supported by crosswise pieces of wood. Additional support was also provided by wooden safety pins, which were arranged radially from the center towards the periphery. The outer wheel and the inner wheel were connected to each other with wooden slats known as steps. To these steps, a rope or later a cable was attached. This rope or cable carried buckets in and out of the well. The whole construction could rotate on an axle, which was propped up on the base of the windlass with supports called cushions. The external surface of the outer wheel had wooden projections connecting the movement of the wheel to the movement of the reel abutting onto the wheel. The reel rotated around a vertical axle known as the spindle. The movement was transferred to the reel by a wooden beam, which on its end had a specially constructed projection on which an animal, usually a mule or a donkey and rarely a horse, would be harnessed. The water was pumped in the following way. The animal followed a predetermined cyclical course causing the rotation of the wooden beam which transferred the movement to the reel. The rods of the reel transferred the movement to the wooden projections of the outer wheel and therefore to the whole wheel. The wheel rotated and the buckets were consecutively submerged into the water and brought up to the surface carrying the water. Each bucket had a small hole at the bottom to allow air to escape when it was being submerged into the water, since otherwise it would not have been possible to fill it. Of course, this way there was water wastage on the way up to the surface. But because the buckets were located one above the other, a large part of the water that spilled from the above buckets would end up in the lower ones. Even so, however, buckets reaching the surface were usually half full. The buckets emptied out into a flat reception cistern made of wood, stone or later of sheet metal. Then the water was transferred from this cistern to a small trough and from there it was transferred through a clay pipe to a water reservoir known as the cistern. The distribution of water to the trees and other cultivations in the orchards was completed in the following way. The water from the cistern ran into a stone furrow which was the main irrigation canal consisting of consecutive pieces of chiseled stones tangential to one another and forming a single open gully. At certain distances along the main canal there were openings from which began secondary channels cut into the ground which ended at the trees or cultivations that needed to be watered. The beginning of each channel opening could be blocked with stones or soil, allowing for the selective provision of water according to the needs of every orchard.